What up? So we got the nice little one-two punch right here. Carry looking nice. Then we got the freshly wrapped Bravo. Still got to hit up all things JDM to get another headlight though. It still works perfectly fine, but in comparison to this beautiful thing, this is really ugly. So I, I got to hit you up and order one of those. But what we're going to do in today's video is talk about the five things that I love about the carry. Good thing about the raffle though, we're down to 100 slots. So we're halfway there already. Just need one more 100. If you haven't entered this raffle, really, what are you doing? Like really think about it right now. It's $50 to win an entire car, like a whole car. And let's say you live in like Florida, right? And you don't even want the car. Like you just are like, you know what? I just want to enter. I don't really want to pay the thousand dollars or whatever it costs to transport it to me. I don't need another car. If you win this car and you live in a state where it costs a lot of money to ship or whatever, I'll help you sell it. Like if that's another thing I'll let people know right now, like if you live in California and you just want to, you're in the gambling mood, you know what I mean? You kind of just want to raffles, but you don't want to worry about the $3,000 it's going to cost to ship to Hawaii or none of that stuff. I'll still help you sell it and you'll get all the money. It's not going to be on like a whole, I'm going to sell it and let me just get 10%. If you win this truck for 50 bucks and you want to sell it for 6,000, I will send you the whole 6,000. It doesn't make any difference to me. My whole goal was just to build this, make a bunch of content and that's going to get done regardless the winner is across the street from me or across the ocean. First and foremost, the thing that I absolutely love about this K-Truck is that the fact that it is a five speed. I had a Daihatsu high jet that was a four speed and always in the back of the mind, I was like, I wonder what a five speed K-Truck is like. I wonder what a five speed K-Truck is like. Oh my God, I'm on the highway, I'm doing 80 kilometers and I hear the engine screaming. I would love to have a fifth gear right now. And that has been a game changer. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you. This car isn't nearly as comfortable as the Bravo, but I would drive this over the Bravo just because it weighs less and I feel like I'm able to go faster, if it makes sense. Like, it's the same exact engine and everything, but driving this for 40 minutes, I feel like I can get there, let's say, in 30 minutes. And if I took the Bravo, it would take me like 35. Just because it's slower, it's heavier, and it just doesn't... It's a lot more comfortable, of course, but just having the fifth gear, like doing those long drives, I'm definitely going to make an upgraded video to the daily driving a K-Truck now that I have a five-speed, but... The five speed, man, you gotta get a five speed K truck if you do a lot of highway driving. If you're using it for like farm use or in the town and stuff like that, get the four speed. But now that I've enjoyed the five speed K truck life for like a month, I don't know if I could ever go back. Number two, I'm gonna have to say looks. So I like the way that the high jet looks and I love the way the little cute round eye Suzuki carry looks, but those are four speed one. And two, they're cute, you know what I mean? But I feel like this one is a bit aggressive. Like, I love, like, the way that the front end looks. And the bar back here, I don't know if it makes sense, but it just looks aggressive. Like, the way it's shaped, like, it goes like this. Like, the other ones don't do that. This one just looks like that. And then the fact that it has a nice light back here. But I love the way that the carry looks. To me, the rear end on every single K truck looks exactly the same. There's no difference, unless you have the sandbar, of course, but they look exactly the same. So the back to me is the same thing, but the front and this little door right here, like this side of the truck is the only thing that's really different. And to me, this one looks super nice. And then to get into the interior, it's similar to like a Supra and like an S2000 where it's driver oriented. Like you see how the dash is like this and then it curves towards you. So like this, everything is faced towards me. So like I have all my little dials here. If I need to touch anything, it's all facing towards me and not the passenger. And it's not flat where like other cars is. So like the dash is kind of driver oriented. So it gives it a nice little touch. And then when it comes to my K truck, of course, the blue definitely helps. The interior is super clean, but I really love the way that the interior looks. It's a little tighter than other K trucks just cause it comes out so much. If you've ever been in other trucks, like a lot of the dashes kind of stop right here, but this one added this little whole little extra pillar right here. So it's a little tighter. Like on my high jet, I definitely had a little more room like with my knees and stuff. Like I wasn't touching this. And then to get to a little more specific on my truck, the fact that it has a little black painted bed, the black bar, the white wheels, the blue, it gives it a nice touch. But in general, I love the way that the carries look like from here forward, nice and aggressive. I'm gonna clean those lights up. It's gonna look even better. All right, so number three on the list is two things, but I want to combine them into one. The first is the idling. I don't know if it's a Suzuki carry thing or this one is just a really well-maintained truck. It only has 66,000 kilometers, so maybe that's what it is. But right now, the truck is 100% on, and this is how it sounds. 
Like I know I added sound deadening, but there's no shakes, there's no rattles, there's nothing. It's just, it's really nice. Like my Bravo still does shakes a little bit. It definitely needs a little tune up, but this one, the way it is, I haven't even done an oil change. I must do an oil change, I think in the next video, but look how quiet it is. Like, that to me is a super pro. And then secondly, kind of has to do with the Suzuki carry and the engine build is the way it sounds like. So I'm gonna drive a little bit so you can hear it, but it has like that little whistling noise. It doesn't sound like a supercharger, of course, but like, let's hear it right now. Like, you know, it has like a little, like kind of like a, like an airplane or something. Like it just has a nice tone to it. Can't beat that sound, honestly for 40 horsepower and you're getting this driving experience this little like go-kart feel to it like you can't beat that number four is kind of a general thing but has to do with fun and the fact that it's worldwide love like everybody loves a k-truck there's no k-truck hating group i don't think that group of people exists so like if you buy a k-truck one you're gonna have a lot of fun i can't imagine someone driving this and not having fun and then two it's just cool. Like everyone is gonna give you a thumbs up. It doesn't matter if it's a 10 year old kid. It doesn't matter if it's a 40 year old woman, if it's an 80 year old woman, everyone who sees a car like this always gives you thumbs up. Lastly and most importantly in my opinion it's gonna have to be value and I mean it in a couple different ways So last year I bought my Daihatsu Hijet for five thousand dollars and I sold it a year later for sixty five And yes, I put some money into it But the fact that I was able to enjoy a car do everything I wanted to do drive it as much as possible And still make my money back or at least make some money is pretty rare in this situation because of course you can buy an S2000 RX-7 a Supra cars like that and make your money back or even make a lot of money in the process you don't really want to drive those too much. You know what I mean? You don't really want to beat on an S2000. You don't want to add any modifications to it. But cars like this, I feel like if you add a lift kit to it, if you add tires, it only adds the value. Like the next person that buys it isn't going to be mad that it has a lift kit. Like the person, like let's say I was selling this truck. I can't imagine me adding these rims, painting that, doing all this, doing all this would actually lose value. Like everything that I'm putting into this truck, the next person most likely will be okay with it and be happy if anything like wow i got a complete truck it isn't like a evo or something where like you do so many modifications that it's like eh, i would rather a stock evo i don't think a lot of people at least in my opinion i don't think a lot of people would be mad if this thing was on a two inch lift kit and had things like that or even the exact opposite has nice little 12 inch rims painted the calipers and drums like that so value in my opinion is very high for this are you going to make a lot of money no but you really could buy this, go off-roading, do a bunch of fun stuff, and at the end of the day, still sell it. And in my case, I sold my K-Truck in one day. It wasn't like a hard, like, grueling process. I think, honestly, selling my van is gonna be a lot harder, but I sold my K-Truck in one day. So that's my first point of value. Another point of value, in my opinion, is that if you're doing something kind of similar to me, like, I've always been a fan of cars. Uh, I have a Turbo Miata that I never show on the channel, and that car is way cooler than this, in my opinion, at least. But to me, it's just like, I'd rather build this for that exact example I'm talking about. I don't want to drive my Miata 10,000 miles. You know what I mean? I would never go on a road trip in my turbo Miata right now and drive to Atlanta. But in the van, I would because I know that when I'm done with the van, the next person that buys it, they're still going to have a super enjoyable car. Like no one is buying a K-Truck to preserve it in a room, at least in my opinion. I can't imagine someone buying a K-Truck and being like, no, this is going to be my garage queen. Like there's just no way. Like they're work trucks at the end of the day. Like we have them here and we glorify them because they're rare, but in Japan, no one is doing that. No one is having a super slammed fire truck. No one for the most part. Obviously there's rare examples, but most people are have this in Japan. They're farm trucks. They're using them to just tow stuff around. They want to go to Home Depot over here. You know what I mean? So like the fact that you just so much value it as far as like just creating content, doing stuff on YouTube. When I bought my truck a year ago, I had a hundred subscribers. A year later, I have a thousand. And it wasn't even like I was posting videos about this nonstop. I really just started posting K-Truck videos crazy like in the last four months. 
So like that has completely just helped me out. Like of course I can make YouTube videos about the Miata and there's way more people out here with Miatas that would watch those videos, but it's just, the K truck is just so much fun. And the last point of value, if you're into the car scene, I guess I would say like a car like this is a super good introductory vehicle to like just getting to know new people. Like let's say you have a Corolla and you feel hesitant to go to car meets. You could buy something like this for five, six thousand dollars, get it registered, and it doesn't have to have any major modifications. And you can still be one of the coolest car shows at the meet. Like that value I know would apply to some people that who are just like, eh, I don't want to drive my Prius to a car meet. So you just buy one of these. There's not a lot of cars you could really buy for five, six, seven thousand dollars that will draw this much attention, be this much fun, and would hold their value that much. Like that's what I really mean by value. Like name another seven thousand dollar car. And that's high. So name another $7,000 car that you could beat on, drive, go off-roading if you're into that, four-wheel drive, uh, manual, five-speed, uh, just just a, a really super fun driving experience. There's not a lot of options, especially that hold their value. Like, yeah, you can buy cars that are better for $7,000, but a year from now, two years from now, how much is that $7,000 car worth? Is it now worth three? Because this K-Truck most likely is probably going to be worth nine or seven still. So like that's another huge part of value. And then lastly, if I want to give some honorable mentions, I love the fact that it has an ultra low, four wheel drive, uh, stuff like that. But that's gonna be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna do the five things I hate next, of course. Um, and again, there isn't a lot of things that I don't like about the K-Truck, but I could definitely find five. I could name one right now, honestly. And it's a stupid radio. Like why would they put the speakers in the radio together? That was just, that didn't make any sense. But catch you guys on the next one, peace.